Oh my god. Yes. The queue is empty. <laughs> we got our last book. Oh my god. <laughs> we hold up. Ah, yeah. So, introductions. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, this is Corey's Confusing Book Reviews. I can see we're incredibly professional. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about refactoring, improving the design of existing code by Martin Fowler. Mm. With contributions by Kit Beck, John Bryant, Willem... Oh, Dyke and Robert, uh, Don Roberts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, man. So, uh, in case you don't know, we've been on... I, I might be perking up a little bit on this one because the last book, but some, <laughs> this is the stack of books that we've been doing today. Uh, and I'm getting it done. Getting it done, guys. <laughs> Uh, we've been sitting on that for two months. Oh, finally getting caught up. It's gonna be feel so good, guys. Just no more, no more books in the queue. Alrighty, you guys don't care. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, too long didn't watch. It. So this is a programming book. If you're not a programmer, you're not a tech nerd or whatever, you can just skip this whole video because this is very much software engineering and programming and code quality and, and, and all that jazz. Uh, uh, if you still too long didn't watch and you are a programmer uh, and you're just in a big hurry, I don't know why you're still watching now, but <laughs> uh, it's a good book. Um it's a good book. Um, I think, I think, uh, I think like the King Clean Code, the, the Clean Code series kind of covers most of this stuff. Just like it was with the Pragmatic Programmer, uh, uh, quite a bit of this advice is kind of been subsumed into more modern uh, uh, code quality programming professional development books and i think the clean code probably uh which came like seven years after this book this was like 2000 i think the clean code came out like 2007 or something like that it's still a good book i want to be i don't know if, if you just want to if you've already read clean code and you still want to read more uh, uh in 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 uh, the code quality analysis kind of vein this is a good book for that. There's, I think, four really popular books that I would put. There's like The Structure of Interpretation of Programming, Pragmatic Programmer, Refactoring, and, uh, and Design Patterns. I haven't read Design Patterns yet, but those four books come up a whole lot, besides the clean code stuff, which everybody, I can kind of take in that as granted. Anybody who's paying attention to architecture and code quality and stuff probably knows about Bob Martin already <laughs> but uh and you probably know about this guy Martin Fowler he's a he's an industry giant uh he's written several books uh, I think this is the most famous one but uh he's a British guy so everything he says is automatically incredibly smart <laughs> And uh, if you if, uh, if you like watching tech talks or whatever, he's another great guy to watch talk. Just because you can hear that accent, and you're like, yeah, this guy knows this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I can hear the accent and knows exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> Anybody who's American knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, um, and he, of course, like what he. He has a really good things to talk about software quality. He's he's one of the early people that's talking about agile, and uh, of course code quality and testing and stuff like that. So very very oh, oh very much in the same vein as uh, as Martin Fowler. You know that whole paradigm. The guys, uh, I would I guess you I don't want to say this. This is not derogatory when I say this. Oh, but it very much kind of like the old guard, the the guys who are now retiring, um, the guys who actually cared about their craft, uh, they're starting to retire now. Very much that. I'm not talking about the 
the guys who just clocked in and clocked out uh, that didn't give a shit about anything. <laughs> We're talking about the guys who, who actually cared about software craftsmanship and actually paid attention. We're doing the uh, uh, quote unquote real agile before it got, uh, 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 you know, um, bastardized into scrum. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, that whole paradigm before, you know, uh, agile became an industry uh before uh before the functional paradigm finally started uh taking uh taking bites out of uh out of oo uh and uh and java and c sharp and, and all that jazz anyway not knocking on anybody who, who writes that code or or uh, I, i'm a firm believer that if you're getting things done getting things done in a somewhat maintainable fashion then, you know, go right for it, you know. Anyway, uh, so this is, this is, uh, it's, it's actually index. You see those got like little indexes in here. I forget what the, the term is. It was, it's, this is all about little strategies for transforming code. And the thing is, is in like, your normal like OO style languages, especially if you have like a, an IDE for Java or C sharp, you're going to be very familiar with this stuff because this is literally just buttons, clicks a wave. You know, you've got extract function and rename method and 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 all of this stuff, which is in here. What what, what here we go? Rename method in here. Rename. At conditional with polymorphism. So it's all of these little tiny uh, atomically applicable um, transformations of the code. So you can go from one implementation to another in a safe way. And I think, I'm not sure, it's been a while since I read this, but I'm pretty sure there's always the assumption that you have tests before you even get to the refactoring phase, you have tests in place to, to make sure that, that the code works the way you expect now, and then you do the refactoring, and then, and then, it, and then it works afterwards. And you can't take that for granted. So this is all kind of in the kind of assumption that you have tests in place to, uh, to, to do anything. So yeah, you got an extract method, inline method, remove assignments uh, to parameters, encapsulate field, change value to reference, encapsulate collection, replace code with classes, remove control flag, replace nested conditional guard, uh, introduce null object, remove parameter, remove settling method. You get, it's very much a recipe book, right? And that is, you would probably, now, I don't know, that anybody would be programming would go, oh yeah, there's a strategy for that, and they'll go find, oh, this is how you do extract method. No, it's more like you see it happen, and now you have a kind of a a name for the operation. Now, I think that was kind of the point why he he put it, why he has all of this. I mean, because it seems like kind of silly. Um, parameterized method. Some of this stuff kind of seems kind of obvious, but it's important, I think, in some way to have the same name for the same operation. Like this is like um documenting and naming operations that were previously or that are already named, right? Just like design patterns. So you like factories and stuff. Factories existed before they were called factories, right? MVC existed before we gave it the name MVC. Um, the repository pattern existed before we had the name repository pattern, but we give them names. It's a repository. It's the factory. When you say these words, they mean a very specific thing in the context of programming, right? And the same thing here. Uh, that's with design patterns, but the same thing whenever I say uh, parameterized method, what I'm saying is that the thing that 
that I'm taking like out of globalized scope. Instead, I'm going to add it as a parameter. Shared scope, like in a class. Instead, I'm going to I'm going to add it to the parameter to the method instead. You know, um, that kind of thing. Um, at least I think that's what parameterized method is. Yeah, several. Okay, here we go. Several methods do similar things, but different values contained in the method body. Okay, yeah. So we got two different methods that do very similar things. We'll we'll just use a. We'll we'll repeat it. I mean, we'll deduplicate it by adding a parameter. Um, yeah. So yeah, so this is, in a sense, it's good to kind of just have it for reference. Um, well, one, so you can <clears throat> toot your horn that you read Refactoring by Martin Fowler, and you found it absolutely fabulous. And everybody should read it, of course. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> but also, um, just so you're clued into the lingo, just like you need to know, you, you need to know the names of design patterns so you can speak the, the language of programming. Uh, it's good to to know what's going on here. Not that, honestly, not that I really know that I, uh, I, um, oh yeah, yeah, here's, and, and some of this stuff is subtle. It's got, uh, um, it talks about strategies for code quality too. So like, uh, replace conditional with uh, polymorphism, right? Um, and that comes up, that's actually a really that's the OO way of doing pattern matching. So if if you're in a language that that doesn't have pattern matching, um instead of having to do like an enum or some or, or some kind of like special field or whatever uh that you're switching on or whatever, you can just do uh some classes, whatever that are uh, subclass and you can switch them you know the the polymorphism is what allows it to switch not that i really think you should be using um inheritance but that is the that is the oo way to do uh um uh, uh, uh to switch you know uh, switch things best off of a that's the way oo does pattern matching right is is you you encapsulate the pattern in in the actual individual class. But anyway, um, I think you get what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's little things like that. So there's so there's some code quality stuff in here, and it gives it a name. So you've got common lingo and stuff, and it's just it's it's just a a, a pivotal book in the field. Um, and again, if you haven't seen Martin Fowler talk. He has a tons of fabulous talks on YouTube. And in general, if you are not watching tech talks, you absolutely should. <laughs> it's a great way to do your lunch breaks is to just watch a tech talk while you're munching on your your sandwich or whatever. Uh, watch a, a tech talk and get caught up on, on some program, new technology or, or code quality or advice or anything like that. Uh, Conference talks are fabulous ways to to keep a prize of, and there's tons, tons and tons of conferences uh, out there to to keep track of. And as you Google, you're gonna find channels that all they do is there'll be channels for each individual conferences, but there are some channels out there, and my mind's blanking right now, that all they do is accumulate talks from all different conferences and stuff like that. So uh, you get on YouTube and you'll find them pretty quickly, but. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea what's coming up next, and it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> the queue is empty. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this has been uh, Refactoring by uh, Martin Fowler. Uh, I highly recommend it, and uh, I will see you guys next time.